Yes, I have different hair yet again. If you have not noticed, I get bored with hair color very, very easily. And the cool thing is the book that I'm reviewing today is actually a big inspiration on the color itself. I'll explain why in a few moments, but I'm really, really digging the pink. I think this may be my favorite. I think I'm actually gonna stick with this for a while. It was the first book that ever really inspired me to do something with my appearance. It really did inspire me to go pink and I really, really enjoy it. So it's just a really cool little happenstance, I guess. By the way, you're gonna see me do this a lot because I just got it done today and I'm not used to this thing yet, getting in my eye. So bear with me, I'm sorry. You're gonna see me doing the whole emo flip kind of thing. Hi guys, this is Desiree and welcome to Unbound Book Reviews and today I'm gonna to be reviewing Sugar and Gold by Emma Scott. Yes, it is that time again when one of my top favorite authors comes out with a new book. If you guys have been around on my channel a lot and you've seen some of my reviews for Emma Scott's books, I am freaking nuts over them. I turn into a total basket case when I find out that she's coming out with a new book, when I read them, when I review them, Full Tilt was the only review in which I actually cried. I couldn't even contain it then. And her books just do something for me. And it all started with How to Save a Life, which I reviewed way back, I think, in March of last year. I can have that linked down below. And Sugar and Gold is part of this series. I don't think it was premeditated for How to Save a Life to have a spinoff, but when Emma gets inspiration, she just writes. And she could be in the midst of an entirely different project and then all of a sudden the inspiration, the urge for new books and new characters will come to her and she'll just go right into it full force. She'll give it everything she has. And there's something about that as a writer that I really, really appreciate that she just, when the inspiration hits and those characters are speaking to you and the story is in your head, you just roll with it. Even if you're in the middle of another project, who cares? You have to write what you're feeling at that moment. So as I said before, How to Save a Life was not intended to have a spinoff or to be a series, but when the inspiration hits, you just gotta roll with it. And it gave us sugar and gold. And of course, guys, it's brilliant. It is absolutely gorgeous. Emma's writing does it for me. It does it for me. I can't explain why I will try my best in this video to explain why, because that's sort of my job here, to explain to you what books do to me and make me feel. So if I can't do that, I'm not doing my job very well. I feel like I have to look up like this, even though you're seeing right at my nose, just to keep my hair in my face so you guys don't have to keep seeing me do this. I'm too afraid to tuck it behind my ear because you know what happens when you tuck your hair behind your ear. You get that dent in there and it just makes it look weird. And because this is the best my hair will look until the next time I get it done, I don't want to compromise it. Okay guys, so let's get into the blurb. Nikolai Alexei Young was born with a special gift. One he'd do anything to lose. The heart and soul of every person he comes into contact with is an open book to his heightened senses. Colorful emotions, whispers of thoughts, the sour tastes of old memories, he feels them all. The sci-fi books would call him an empath. For Nikolai, his ability has made him an exile. He roams the U.S. alone, avoiding the glut of life in big cities, and using his innate talents to win money in underground poker games just enough to keep going one town to the next. He has no hope that his life can be anything else until he meets her. At 19, Fiona Starling was trapped in an ugly, desperate situation until she freed herself the only way she knew how. Now, three years later, living outside Savannah, Georgia, she is rebuilding her life on her own terms, seizing every moment and saving every penny so that she might fulfill her dream of moving to the raw wilderness of Costa Rica. But behind her carefree smile beats the heart of a lonely young woman haunted by her past, until a chance encounter with a tattooed stranger changes everything. Fiona takes Nikolai under her roof for three sultry nights, waiting out the rain of a summer storm. She grows more and more fascinated by this brooding stranger with whom she shares an intense physical connection. A connection so strong, she wonders if there is something between them beyond lust and passion. Nikolai is shocked to discover that Fiona calms the raging turmoil in his heart. She alone silences the din of other people's lives and envelops him in the sweet beauty of her inner self. Every moment he's with her, every touch of her skin, brings him closer to that peace that's been eluding him his entire life. But Fiona harbors secrets that she is too terrified to reveal. 
After Nikolai confesses his unique ability, she is caught between wanting to believe him and fearing he'll eventually unearth her own dark past. When the unthinkable happens, Fiona's plans come crashing down, and Nikolai discovers his hated ability might be the only thing that can save the woman he loves. Sugar and Gold is a new adult romance with shades of paranormal and is the second book in the Dreamcatcher novels, a series of interconnected standalones. It is not necessary to have read How to Save a Life first in order to follow the story, but characters will appear across all novels, intended for readers 18 and up, which we know. If you are not 18 years or older, you should not be watching my channel or reading these books because some of them are a bit naughty. And for those of you who have not read How to Save a Life, that is Dreamcatcher book number one. I will link my review for that down in the description box below. There are some bits of paranormal in it. And the thing is, this, this series is so unique. Both of these books, How to Save a Life and Sugar and Gold, are so unique because they never quite cross the line into paranormal. They sort of straddle it a little bit. So it's not a full-on paranormal like you would encounter with a vampire book, a werewolf book, you know, all that good stuff. This is not quite there yet. It's got a little bit of flirtation with paranormal in it, a little dash of it, but it's enough to really drive the story forward, and it's just not an overwhelming element in it, but it does play uh, a significant and integral part into the story. So before we start anything, I do have to talk about the cover. I have to. I mean, look at how beautiful this cover is. There is just so much attention to detail with the birdcage and the colors. I've been told that all of the tattoos that he has on there were put on for this cover. None of them were there um, during the process of creating it. They had to be added, which, I mean, that is attention to detail right there. And I absolutely love Emma's covers. And this one I think is one of my favorites. I can't pick anymore because the Butterfly Project is freaking gorgeous. This one is freaking gorgeous. The artist behind these covers is just freaking genius and I have to point that out really quick. Nikolai Alexei Young, which by the way, how sexy and exotic is that name? I love that name. Nikolai Alexei. Ooh, just so good. He is a bit of a lone wolf. He is a vagabond. He's been traveling around the country, playing in underground poker games, which he wins every time because he is, as described in paranormal senses, he is an empath. He deeply senses the emotions of other people. He feels them, he tastes them, he smells them. So jealousy would be you know, sour and ugly or bitter. Depression would have a certain color. Happiness, love has a certain color. And at times it can be so overwhelming. I mean, if you think about it, it's like being in a room where every single sound and feeling is just magnified to the nth degree. That's what he deals with on a daily basis. He's been through so much in his childhood, obviously had a lot of trouble with his family. I mean, who believes you when you tell them that you are, that you have heightened senses, truly heightened senses where feelings have tastes and colors and whatnot. And he calls it his Ken. Now the difference between Nikolai and Evan, who's from How to Save a Life, is Nick can really pinpoint what his ability is. And Evan in How to Save a Life didn't quite know what his ability was. He didn't even know it really was an ability until he met Joe. But Nick has his totally pinpointed. Now he doesn't understand why he has it. Now the Ken thus far has only been useful in his winning underground poker games because he can sense other people's tells. He knows when people are bluffing. Because he is in a constant state of heightened awareness, he knows when people are lying and he can tell and he can easily just win a game. And, and he's been saving up so much money and traveling all across the country with no idea why. He has no purpose. All he knows is that he has to keep going, he has to keep winning, and he just wants this Ken to go away. And then one night he is in a nightclub and he meets this beautiful, radiant young woman named Fiona. She has this pink hair. She is a very slight young thing, but there's something about her that radiates goodness. Pink is what he associates her with. Her color to him is pink, and thus the inspiration 
for the hair. Fiona is a very caring person. She's very nurturing. Fiona has been through the fucking ringer. She has had a time and a half. She has a very ugly past. She has a lot of aspirations to leave the country, to live her own life in freedom, to be around nature, which is really where she thrives. She is a nurturer. Fiona is just a very caring and nurturing person. She lives to help people thrive and to help people grow, to help animals thrive, to help animals grow. But she's trying to live in the moment just a little bit. And when she spots Nick in this nightclub, she has a fuck it moment. And you know what? What's life without a little bit of fun? What's life without a little bit of risk? I'm gonna take him home with me. So she does. And they have some very intense nights together and they connect on a very deep level. And for Nikolai, this is very, very special and unique because Fiona is the one person in his entire life who he's met who can silence the Ken completely, calm him, because she has an inherently sweet and loving nature. He doesn't feel her greed. He doesn't feel her anger. He gets sweetness and loving and kind from her. So it's very peaceful for him to be around her. But at the same time, it terrifies him. What does this mean? What is he supposed to do? How in the world could he possibly tell her and have her believe him? And thus there is a lot of conflict in this story. Not just in Nikolai attempting to confess to Fiona that he has this distinct ability and have her believe him, but there is a lot going on in this book. Now, out of Emma Scott's books, this is a lighter read. Is it a light read in the grand scheme of books? No, 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 no. Emma's books are so emotionally evocative and they really pull you in and you feel everything. And that's why I adore her so much as a writer because Emma writes things that makes you feel. And it's on all areas of the scale on feels. She has a very broad range of emotions in her books. So, and when I refer to this book as a light read, I only mean in the sense that this is not a curl up in the fetal position, tear jerking novel like Full Tilt was. You guys know what Full Tilt did to me. Even thinking about it gets me a little emotional because it's an intensely emotional book. But on the Emma Scott scale, I would say this is very similar to how I felt when I read Rush, where there are some very heavy elements to it, there are some very heavy moments to it, where you are going to feel deeply, and I do mean deeply, down to your very bones, you will feel these characters' pain in the situations that they have to go through in order to thrive and in order to grow. Now, Emma has just an uncanny ability to make me tear up or cry or bawl like a fucking baby in any one of her books. And I'm normally a pretty tough chick when it comes to books. I don't cry very easily. I tear up, but I never cry. I cry while reading all of Emma's books. Now there are different levels of how badly I cry, but I'm calling it the Emma Scott effect because it's just what her books do to me. They make me feel. And those are the types of books that I love to read the most. I'm not much of a light book reader. I'm just not a, a lighthearted kind of reader. A good romantic comedy every once in a while, if it's done very well, I'm all for. But I like books that make me feel things. And that's what Emma's books do. They make me feel things down to my very spirit, down to my very bones. And if you have not read an Emma Scott book, what are you doing with your life? If you are a reader and you love the romance genre and you have not read an Emma Scott book, just, we can't be friends anymore. We can't be friends anymore. You have to go read her books, please. They are just amazing. Her writing is gorgeous. It's not overly poetic, but she does have a beautiful prose. She does have beautiful turn of phrase. It's just not listy. It's not overly detailed. And the way she writes her characters, they are so dynamic, so multifaceted, and the growth that you experience with these characters that you see them go through is so unique and natural and genuine and nothing is ever forced. She is just so talented and I appreciate the risks that she takes because writing a book that is neither paranormal nor contemporary is not an easy thing to do. When you blend those two together, I've never heard of that being done, ever. Not successfully anyway, but Emma does it 
flawlessly, flawlessly. I don't know how she does it, but she is such a talented writer. She's such a unique writer. And this book for me was everything. It's so different from the other books, even from How to Save a Life, even though it's in the same series, it is very much a standalone novel, although some of the characters in How to Save a Life do make some cameos in Sugar and Gold, but it's nothing that you should be concerned over, as it said in the description um, when I read the blurb. You don't have to read How to Save a Life in order to get this one, but if you are intrigued by the characters, and if I were you, and I were reading Sugar and Gold, and I hadn't read How to Save a Life, I would be incredibly intrigued, and How to Save a Life was my gateway Emma Scott novel. That was the novel that hooked me. That was the novel that completely turned me on to her books and made me obsessed with her writing and obsessed with her books. But as I said before, they are standalone, so you don't have to read both of them, but I highly, highly recommend it because, oh, they're so good. They are so amazing. I don't even have time to go into a spoiler section right now because I'm running on 45 minutes here. I could just sit here and ramble, and I love books that do that to me. I love books that I just can't stop thinking about, I can't stop talking about. Yes, you guys are going to see me be a babbling mess, you're going to see me really disorganized, but that's because there are so many different things that are popping into my head, so many different aspects of the story that I loved that are just popping into my head at random that I have to tell you guys. I'm, I'm compelled to tell you guys, and that's why I love reading. That is why I love books like this. That is why I appreciate these authors so much because they bring so much to my life. They bring out that passion. And Emma's books just invoke this passion within you because they make you feel so deeply. So if you have not read an Emma Scott book, please, please, I don't care which one you read, although if you read Full Tilt or The Butterfly Project, I am not responsible for your bill for Kleenexes, just not going to happen, fair warning to you right now. If you have not read any of her books, please go download any of them and just take a day, tomorrow, next week, whenever, and sit and read her books and tell me you are not absolutely hooked. Just tell me. If you're not, we're, we're not friends anymore, I'm sorry. Okay guys, so that is it for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you are not ready to see some more videos from me. And I will see you guys later. Bye.